Hey, welcome back, guys. Um, all right, so now we actually get into the styling part. Um, in the last video, I showed you guys how to create an external style sheet, even though we're not going to be using that for um, this particular lesson, but we will get into external style sheets um, later on. I gave you a brief explanation of what the uh, three types of style sheets are. Do you remember what they were? Hopefully, hopefully you said external, embedded, and inline, okay? And then um, external style sheets is when you create the external file and you save it out into um, the CSS folder inside of your local root folder. The inline are done in line with your uh, ACML tag or element. And then the embedded is in the head section of your um HTML document and it affects like entire like it would affect the whole h1 element or the whole header element nav elements and things like that so in this particular document we're going to be doing inline styles and we're going to be using um, what's called embedded styles now as I mentioned embedded styles go inside of the head of your document so we would search for where the end of title is also here's an area that I think we forgot in class. I think I made a note. If you do not have a head section, which I think we do, but just in case, if you do not have a head section, right below your HTML tag, your language en um, dash us, put a head tag here. It should be before the meta tag and it should be before the title tag. I'm sure we did, but I just wanna make sure. So there should be a head, which will be the third line of your uh, document. Then going further down, going down to the meta tag, then the title tag, or the title element, ooh, the whole element, then you'll see the closing of the head. That's what should be there. There should be a closing of head tag between title and your opening tag of body. So just please look through and make sure you have that. If not, go ahead and place those there. Okay. Or pause the video and place those there. Now. Right after title, I'm going to hit return because this is where we're going to put our style tags. Look at that. It's a style element. What? And then everything in between it. Um, so it's a style tag we're going to put in there. An open style tag, a closed style tag, and everything in between becomes an element. You already know. I just thought I'd tell you. All right. So let's go ahead and add our style um, element to this. And we're just going to type style. Here's our style tag. Hit return a couple of times because I know the stuff is going to go in between. And let's go ahead and put our closed style element inside of here. Okay. So now we've added our style element. We're not going to do anything to it now. I just want you to know that style element is in there. What we're going to use the style element for this is we're going to use it to style our links. And we're going to do that a little later on and when we... Um, uh, get into this. But the first thing that we're going to style is we're going to go into our body area. So let's go into the body tag itself. And you know what we're going to do, right? We're going to extend the functionality. You know how we're going to do that? With a style attribute, of course. So let's hit space and let's type style. And we already know how we do our attribute, right? Whatever the name of it is, the equal sign and the quote quote. By now, this should be super easy to you. Okay. Now, I want to zoom into this area, but I don't remember. Let's see. Oh, I just realized you don't see the top of my box. I forgot to drag my recorder window up to the top. So, up at the top, the window that I'm going to go to, actually, I'm not going to go to the window. We're just not going to zoom in. All right, so the style element, inside of our style element is where we're going to tell it, hey, we want this to have a different background color. Cool thing about the W3C, which I showed you guys the other day, and let's go to it here, W3Schools, sorry, website, um, go to learn HTML, is... We're going to um, give it some color. And like I said, if you don't see um, your bar that always shows up. Okay, so I have another video that's finished. Let me go ahead and close that real quick. 
sweet. All right, if you don't see your bar that shows up, like because I am doing a recording, so I'm losing real estate, you go to this little um, list and it'll show you. Yours should be up. You should have no problem. You should see this list right to your left. But anything that you need to know, like uh, for instance, we're going to be using CSS colors. You can go into, we're running HTML side. Let's click on the CSS side. And then let's click into this little list. And then anything you need to know about like CSS or HTML or things like that. Oh, I thought I hit CSS. I guess I didn't. Let's see. All right, so anything you need to know about CSS and the colors are inside of here as well. So if we wanted to know um, background colors or um, let's see what else is in. Box sizing, which are things we'll get into later. But CSS three colors, we can. And if we click on that, it's going to tell us how to use colors. Um, it's going to tell us a lot of information about the different colors as well. And let's see what else we want. Um, CSS backgrounds, which are what we're going to be dealing with in a few moments. And there's also one that will show you the actual CSS color values, like as far as, here it is. So down here in references, where it says CSS references, it says CSS color values. If we click on that, oops, that's not the one I wanted. I wanted the names, sorry. CSS color names is the one we want. So I gotta go back down. Uh, where'd it go? References. Where'd the names go? I just seen it. I tell you. Let's see. CSS. Let's go down to our list. Let's see if it takes us down to references. Color names. Okay. So CSS color names. That's what we want to see because this is what we're going to be dealing with. There are a total of 140 color names that you can use. There's also millions of hexadecimal numbers that you can use. But the reason I have you seeing this is because we're going to be using the one for the color called corn silk. And then if I just, we just put it in there, you're like, where in the world did you get that color from? From the CSS page, there's corn silk. If I wanted to use the hexadecimal numbers, which were for a long time, the only way that we could get colors we're using these numbers on our websites, but nowadays, you know, we can just type words in here. But there's 140 names that are already pre-programmed that the browser knows, oh, they want this color, oh, they want that color. So I just wanted to show you this on the CSS website where you can get this, how you can make this work for you. All right, so that being said, let's go back into our document and inside of our styles, we're going to target the style for background color. Now with CSS, it all has to be lowercase. Anytime you're dealing with CSS or styles, everything has to be lowercase. And you cannot have any spaces, as you can't with HTML, period. But you can't have any spaces. So what they do is, whenever it's two words, they use a dash. So for this one, we're going to do background color, dash, color. And then CSS syntax is whatever the color is or whatever the value is and then whatever the property is. Okay, so we have is a property value combination. The property that we're targeting is the background color, and then we're gonna use this semi, I mean, sorry, this colon, okay, because now we're saying, okay, the background color is done. The next thing that I want is the color of corn silk. So corn, that's like, okay, oops. And you have to close a CSS rule with a semicolon. So here's the CSS syntax. It is the property, the property of background color. Then this colon, which says, hey, browser, I'm finished with the property. So think of this as a sentence. You know how you have to have a comma to separate and give you your pause? This would be your comma. So you're saying, oh, okay, background color, comma, but it's using colons because you're using CSS syntax. And then you're saying, my property is done. Now my value is corn silk. And now I'm ending the sentence, right? So I'm going to give it a semicolon, just like you would give the end of a sentence a period. Okay. And then these quotes pretty much are just because it's an attribute. And if you write your attribute correctly, you don't even have to 
that to worry about. It's going to already be in there for you. So again, we're using the style attribute, right? And we want to affect our background color. So our property is our background dash color. We have to end it. We have to tell the browser, hey, the property is finished with a semicolon. I'm sorry, with a colon. Then we have to give it a value. And then we have to say, oh, now this whole rule is finished. So that means it's going to be finished with a semicolon. And then we're going to save it. And then we're going to preview it. And your background color should have changed. If yours did not change, check to see if you have something capitalized. Also check to make sure that your dash is there. And also check to make sure that your semicolon is there because all of these are important. And check to make sure that your semicolon is there. Also check to make sure the corn silk is spelled right. Another common mistake is background might not be spelled right. So just make sure all that's spelled right and you should be rolling. Check that and see. All right, now the next thing we want to do is we want to give a style to main because now we want to say, hey, you know, um, we have a total width because if we look at the final, notice that um, main has a width, okay, and it's also centered. So we want to make that stuff happen. I'm going to close out one of these real quick. Okay, so... We know that everything is centered pretty much, and we know that um, that main has like a special width, and the width that we're gonna give main is gonna be that 1024, okay? So main is our main area. Um, we also have the wrapper, which we could target, but we're gonna target the wrapper in um, another exercise. For this one, we're gonna save our target for main. So let's go into main to our main tag and let's go ahead and give main the style attribute right so let's go ahead and open main up so we're opening this tag up we're giving this style equals quote quote make sure you put your quote quotes in there because that's going to save you a lot of heartache later okay now we want to give our website a specific width the specific width that we want to give it is 1024. So we're going to give it, now we're dealing with CSS syntax. Remember CSS syntax is property value. So the property is going to be um, whatever property we're targeting. In this case, we're targeting the width. So the property is going to be width. Then we have to give it the colon so that the browser knows, oh, the property is ending then we have to give it whatever value that we want it to have. And then we have to give it a semicolon so the browser knows, okay, they're finished with uh, this particular style. So we want to give it the width, right? Width, and we want to give it our colon. Let's do a space, only because I like clean code. So we want to give it a value. The value is 1024 pixels, because that's the size that we want this website to be. And then we have to tell it, oh, the style is ending, so we're going to give it a um, semicolon. Once we have that one in, the next property value that we want to target is margin. So we want to say, hey, we want our website to be centered. We want it to be centered across the page. Okay, So we're going to give it a margin of zero auto. So now the property is margin. We want to make sure that we tell it, okay, now the property is done. The value we want is zero space auto. What this means is now this is telling the browser, oh, okay, um, I don't want any spacing on the top and the bottom, but I want the left and the right to auto center itself no matter how big the browser is. So I want it to auto-center itself to the browser window. We can save this by hitting, oops, I hit Command S, sorry. Save this by hitting Control S. Up, oh, Command S is search. Okay, so I'm sorry, Control S is search. Command S, if you're on a PC, then Control S means um, to save. And now we'll go back to our document. We'll look at how our document is not centered 
I'm going to zoom this out some so that we can see it, how it's not centered across our page. But when we hit refresh, now the bottom part in our main area is centered across the page. Do you see that? Did it work for you? Sweet. Now, there is a way that we wouldn't have had to do that. We could have had it to where our, um, our whole entire page centered for us. However, um, and we would do that by targeting the, um, the wrapper. But for now, we'll individually do it just uh, as a learning um, uh, for demonstration purposes. However, later on, um, I will be teaching you guys how to set that up. Okay, so now we have our main area is centered across our page. So this is starting to look how we want it to look. The next thing that we're going to target is our H1 tag because notice on our H1 tag here, it is brown. So we want ours to be um, a shade of brown as well. Also, it is centered and we want ours to be centered. It's also following a different font. So we want ours to follow a different font and it's a different size. So we got some work to put in. So let's go ahead and find our H3 tag. I'm sorry, our H1 tag. Did you find yours? I found mine. Okay, so we're gonna extend the functionality of this H1 tag by adding a style to it. Let me brighten up my screen just a little bit more. Okay, so we wanna add a style attribute to it, right? So the space bar, let's type style equals, cause it's an attribute, and your quote, quote. And if you put that quote, quote in there, less stuff for you to remember later. We have the quote, quote in there, and I know you do, because I do, so we both should. Now, the property we wanna target is color. We wanna say, hey, whenever we're targeting text, it is not text color, it is really simply just the word color. So let's go ahead and type color for our property, put our colon in there, and then the value that we want is simply just the color brown, okay? Make sure you put that semicolon in there, and then save with Command S. If you're on a Mac, PC would be Control S. Now we want to put the space. Make sure you're inside of that um, of those quotes, though, when you're doing this, so you have a whole crazy mess later on. The next one we want is font family. Now, font family is two words. How did I tell you guys that we target words with two words inside of CSS? If you sit with a dash, you're absolutely right. So you want to do font dash family. Okay, so this is going to be our property. We're ending our property. So what do we put in there? A colon. Perfect. You guys are rock. All right, and the font has to be capitalized for this one. So Verdana. Fonts have to be written in the way that they are or the browser can't find them. And then the browser is just going to use any old crazy font and then you're not going to be happy. All right, so how do we tell it that we're finished with our style? Semicolon, perfect, all right? So we told it the font family is going to be Rodana. Now we want to uh, set up an alignment for our text. So this is gonna be two words. How do we combine two words in CSS? That's right, with that dash. And all words in CSS, when you're talking properties, all properties are lowercase. They have to be. So text align. And then well, how do we uh, end the property? With the colon. Perfect. And we want this to be the value. We want is it to be center. And then make sure you put that semicolon to end that row. All right, and when we're done with our style, let's go ahead and go outside of our uh, semicolon because the next thing that we want, which we don't really have to have, I only want you doing this just to show you that it can be done on anything. After that semicolon, hit the space. We're gonna add just the title attribute. Now, how do we add that? I'm not even gonna say it because you guys know by now. 
That's right. Title attribute would just be title and then quote, quote. And all we're going to say here, I'm going to highlight this National Chocolate Caramel Day because that's really all I want to be in the title. I'm going to copy that. And then let's paste that inside of our title tag, that National Chocolate Caramel Day. Let's save that. Let's preview ours. And what should have happened, your National Choc your Today is National Chocolate Caramel Day should have centered itself. It should be that color of brown. And when you hover over it, it should have that title. This is National Chocolate Caramel Day. Does yours? Oh, if yours does, you rock. Great job. So awesome. All right. So notice that if we look at our final, our image um, and everything seems to be centered to the browser. Well, if we look at ours, everything else is centered to the browser because we put that uh, rule or main, but our image is kind of off to the left. So what we need to do is target the image, the image's parent, um, and the image's parent is nav. Remember, it's inside of nav. So what we want to do in here is we want to give nav the style attribute, right? Style equals quote, quote, okay? So we have that in here. And now we need to target two things for this. One, we need to tell it what the width is. And the width, as we stated, was 1024 pixels. Okay, and then we need to close that rule, of course. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to give it a margin. And we need to say, hey, I want you to center yourself to the browser. So anytime we're talking about centering ourselves to the browser, we're talking about this zero auto, okay? Because the zero auto says that I want there to be no zero spaces on the top and the bottom, but I want there to be even. I want no matter how big the browser is, I want it to be even and equally centered to the left and the right sides of the margin. And when we get into our lab class, we'll talk more about this and it'll make sense for now. Just go ahead and type that zero auto in there. All of this will be cleared up for you guys on uh, next Saturday. Okay, so we have that zero auto in there. So anytime we want to center our information with the browser, no matter how big the browser gets, how small the browser gets, we're talking about margin equals zero auto. And what zero auto means is it's going to be zero at the top and zero at the bottom, meaning pixel wise. That means it's going to butt up to the top. And then it's going to be automatic on the left and the right. So that means the spacing will be auto. So it's automatically going to center to the left and right of the browser. All right. So that, oops, oops, I tell you, I save stuff left and right. That takes care of our, um, of our centering. So, so far in here, we made the text brown, we've centered our main area, and we've centered our um, image. Okay. So in the next videos, we'll continue uh, trying to make this look as close as possible to our uh, final. Believe it or not, we're almost there.